What's up guys and welcome back to episode 3 of the free to play level 3 skiller series. In the last video we trained fishing, cooking, fire making, and wood cutting and we also did some quests. In this video we're going to do some more quests and we're going to train some of the skills we haven't trained yet. So without further ado, let's get into it. Since I'm basically already in Falador, I figured I'm going to update my hairstyle and beard. This is the same hairstyle and beard that I have on my main skiller account, but it doesn't really look too good with this party hat to be honest. I really wish old school would add in some more beard options. There are a lot of cool NPCs that have beards that I actually really like, but it's just unfortunate that they did the hair update, but not the beard update. All right, so here's the new hair. Uh, I like it a lot more than the one that I had. So because Dork's quest got us all the way up to level 10 mining, that's the same mining level we need to mine Blurite Ore. And because we're already in Falador, we are going to do the Knight's Sword quest. Of course, I spelled hello wrong. But jeez louise, there's so many people here. Times like these, I wish I had a teleport tab. Okay, now here's the most dangerous part of the entire quest. I have to make sure that I don't die or I'm going to be having to run all the way back. Now we just have to mine two of these ores. Hopefully not dying. Maybe I could juke this guy right out of the gate. Come on. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, we have him stuck there. We got the first one. Which got us to level 11 mining, we can now use a black pickaxe. So we're just gonna wait here for this to respawn instead of world hopping. Because if I world hop, this guy could be literally anywhere and it could cause some problems. Alright, there's our two blurite ores, now let's get out of here. Okay, so we made it safely. Alright, so we're gonna take this first blurite sword and we're gonna drop it on the ground. And then we're gonna talk to Thurgo again to get another sword. Then we're gonna pick that one up. And now we have two. The reason that we want two swords is so that whenever we turn one in, we have one to keep. Never gonna be wearing this sword, I don't think, but you know, it's cool to have. Something that I was thinking about is that because we are a free to play account, we're not gonna be able to get skill capes if I do end up getting a 99. So the one exception to members items that I'm gonna allow myself to have are the 99 skill capes. I won't make myself a member to actually get them, but I will use the fashion scape plugin so that it looks like I'm wearing one. I still think that they should make all of the free-to-play skills have free-to-play skill capes, but, you know, it is what it is. I guess it's a perk of getting membership. But yeah, if I end up getting a 99 in any of my stats, I am going to allow myself to wear the fashion scape skill cape. But alright, here we go. 12,725 smithing XP and one quest point, bringing us to a total of 20 quest points and level 29 smithing. So that was totally worth all of the running around I had to do. Because we basically almost have level 30 smithing right out of the gate. I think what I'm going to go do now is do some crafting because that's a lower skill that I have. And then maybe we're going to focus on mining. Not too sure about that yet though. I might want to do some more wood cutting again because forestry is so fast. So I guess we'll see when the time comes. You guys want to see a master at work? I literally just said, would anyone be interested in buying a mithril axe? And this guy's trading me. I can't even sell it in the grand exchange. For 48 GP. Oh wait, I can't sell it. Like I said, do you guys want to see a master at work? Look at him go. I, he's not going to give these to me. I don't even know why he's showing me. I'm going to pretend like it's something I've never seen before. Gas, that's insane. Whoa! Other player declined trade. So this guy just wanted to flex that he had like 60 mil. What a lame dude. Okay, so I want to be able to make ruby necklaces because I think you actually make money doing those in free-to-play. And they're pretty decent crafting XP as well. However, we're level 4 crafting at the moment. So what I think we're going to do is just make some leather stuff up until we get to level 40 crafting. I'm not sure how many I'd need, but we're just going to buy some stuff and then we'll figure it out. So we're going to start out with 500 leather and we're going to see how far that gets us. Just kidding, we need to get thread. Okay, now let's see how far 500 leather gets us. Level 7 crafting, we can finally make some leather boots. I say finally, like this didn't only take me like 30 seconds. Level 9 crafting, we can now make the leather cowl. Level 11 crafting, we can now do leather van braces. Level 14 crafting, we can now make leather armor. This is really picking up a lot because one leather when I was making gloves was like 13 XP, and now each leather is 25 XP. Level 15 crafting, and level 18 crafting. Level 18 crafting is a milestone for two reasons. Number one, we can now craft leather chaps. And number two, we finally hit 200 total level. 
On a regular skiller, 200 total level isn't a lot, and on a free-to-play skiller, it's not really a lot. But yeah, it is our first milestone that I actually remember to record. And level 20 crafting coming in here. We can now cut sapphires and craft sapphire rings. I completely forgot about cutting gems, to be honest. So what we're going to do is sell the rest of these leathers and we're going to buy a chisel and some sapphires. Not sure how many uncut sapphires I'm going to need. So we'll just buy 500 of them just to be safe. All right, now here comes some serious XP gains here. Level 25 crafting. And level 27 crafting. 27 crafting is important because we can now cut emeralds instead of sapphires. And as you guys can see, I severely overestimated the amount of materials that I need to get to this level. I'm just so used to late game skilling that these little amounts of stuff seem like they won't get me anywhere. But now we're on to the uncut emeralds. I'm going to buy 300 of them this time. And in order to cut rubies, we need level 34. So I might have bought too many again, but I guess we'll see in a second here. Level 28 crafting, we can now craft hard leather armor, but I'm going to be sticking with jewelry because it's way faster. Last gem of the inventory to get us to level 30 crafting. I just realized that I'm actually making money by cutting emeralds. I'm making 13 GP per uncut. So yeah, I actually might stick doing emeralds. I'm going to see if rubies are also a profit margin. If they are, that would be really nice because I could just keep cutting those for money, which is basically free crafting XP at that point. All right, and here we go. Level 34 crafting already. We can now cut rubies and craft ruby rings. So yeah, I did once again overestimate the amount of emeralds that I needed. So according to the Grand Exchange, uncut rubies are 913 each and cut rubies are 854. So yeah, we do actually lose some money on rubies, which isn't a big deal because I was planning on cutting these anyway. And I'm going to buy 300 of these as well. And I think this should be enough to get us up to level 40 crafting. 85 XP per ruby. That is so much better than literally anything else you could be doing at this level in free to play. 35 crafting already. So I thought I'd do a quick check to see how much XP an hour I'm getting cutting rubies. And the answer is about 225k XP an hour. Absolutely crazy. Here is level 40 crafting. We could finally enter the crafting guild and make ruby necklaces. But yeah, 225k an hour pre-level 40. That's an insane amount of XP an hour, especially in free to play. So if we decide to make ruby necklaces, the ruby itself is about 870 GP. And the gold bar is 118 GP. So in order to make one ruby necklace, it's 888 GP. And they sell for 1,159. So we're going to be making about 300 GP per ruby necklace doing ruby necklaces. So yeah, that is definitely what we're going to do from here on. Don't think it's going to be as much XP as cutting rubies. But at least this way we make cash instead of burning through it. So once we get the 2,000 gold bars and the 2,000 rubies... We would have spent just under 2 mil on these materials. So once they buy and we turn them into necklaces, let's see how much we get. 45 crafting. We can't do anything as a free-to-play player with that stat. This is actually pretty good XP an hour. Only negative part is it uses your run like crazy. Uh, if you run on the way back, it's 0 kilograms. But if you run on the way there, it's 24 kilograms. So the smart thing to do is to walk to the furnace and then run back. That's kind of annoying, so I just leave run on and let it recharge itself. But yeah, as I said earlier, this XP is not bad at all. Just sucks that you run out of run energy running from the bank. Thought I could show the XP per hour here doing ruby necklaces. Averages out to about 85k XP an hour, which is really good for a money maker, especially in free to play. And it's really good XP an hour for free to play as well. All right, we finally hit level 50 crafting. We can now craft ruby amulets, but they don't make as much money as ruby necklaces. So far, we've almost made half of the ruby necklaces, so I will keep you guys updated once we're almost done. Okay, we're on the last inventory of crafting these ruby necklaces. It's been a few days since I last logged in on this account. Been playing a lot of Overwatch 2 lately. However, crafting all 2,000 ruby necklaces got us up to level 56 crafting. It is 20 levels higher than our previous highest stat, which was 36 fire making. But because it's been a few days since I last logged in, I don't know the price of ruby necklaces anymore. It says that they're going for 1,146. 
but let's run over to the Grand Exchange and see how much everything really cost. Okay, so to find the highest price of ruby necklaces, we're going to buy one in the Grand Exchange for way more money than it's actually worth, just to see what the highest seller is selling for. And they're selling for 1,109. So we're going to sell all of these for 1,108. And if everything sells, we're going to get a total of 2,195,000 GP. And we bought everything for a total of 1,978,000 GP, which means that we made a 217,000 GP profit, which really isn't too bad, especially because we ended up getting like 150,000 XP while also making 217k. So yeah, it actually turned out pretty nicely. What we're going to go do now is train some smithing and we're going to get that up a bit to match the other stats. I would train runecrafting, but I'm really not in the mood right now, especially because I've been training runecrafting on my main skiller for a very, 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 very long time at this point. What is going on here? I'm telling you, man, free to play is a weird place. Here's a fun fact that you guys might not have known. The black pickaxe basically weighs nothing. I didn't realize that until just now. A regular pickaxe weighs 2.267 kilograms. If you're doing something like rune span or something like that where the pickaxe tier doesn't matter, at least I don't think it matters in rune span, you guys should be wearing a black pickaxe because it saves your weight. Then again, I don't think you get anything that weighs anything in uh, rune span, so. And I realize I just said rune span. Uh, yeah, that hasn't been a thing in a very long time. So how you train runecrafting in RS3. What I meant to say was Guardians of the Rift. But the point remains, if you want to save weight and pickaxe tier doesn't matter, use a black pickaxe. Here we go, level 15 mining, we can now mine iron ore. I'm not going to be doing that though because there are people in like every world mining iron and for some reason Jimmy's over here stealing my rocks. Like the video and subscribe also. Big fan of those. <laughs> Great series, one of my favorites. Yeah, as I was saying, there are people in like every world mining iron ore over here and they all have rune pickaxes, so I don't stand a chance to even try mining iron ore unless I mine from this one specific rock all the way up until at least level 41. Bro, look at this guy reading the map with his mithril full helm yellow boots and adamant dagger. What a champion. This man is on a mission that only he knows. Hey, level 20 mining coming in here. You can now mine silver. And members can now equip mining gloves and mine size 2 stars. Are free-to-play players not able to mine stars higher than size 1? I don't think that's right. Maybe it just means members can now equip mining gloves and we can also mine size 2 stars. I don't know. Yeah, because I follow Impling only and she mined shooting stars all the way up to level 99 in free-to-play. So yeah, I don't know why it says that. Maybe they just added shooting stars after they put the message in about mining gloves. I don't know. Here we go. Level 21 mining. We can now mine with mithril pickaxes. Really funny to think that 21 mining is only 5,000 XP. On my main skiller, if I did an inventory of blood runes, that's literally like 5.5k XP, so I would go from level 1 to 21 rune crafting pretty much instantly. These lower levels, man, the XP is so little. But yeah, regarding the pickaxes again, the iron pickaxe is 2.267 kilograms, the mithril pickaxe is 1.814, adamant's 2.721, and rune is 2.267. Just makes it even crazier that the black pickaxe is only 0.01. I wonder if it's the same situation with the black hatchet as well, but I wouldn't know because I got rid of mine. But yeah, that's where I'm actually going to end today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like below. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. That way you see when a new episode comes out. But as I said earlier, hope that you guys enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you in the next one.